Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, today we're going to talk about Philippines and I know many of you guys uh, particularly know the crowd that is generally anti-West and uh, you, people always know will just say Philippines is a you know, puppet state of the United States and in certain way is not exactly wrong but if you are actually living in this region, in Southeast Asia, and uh, in the various different countries, be it Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, whatnot, you, you, would, you would realize the nuances and it's actually not so simple. And it's actually not so black and white. In fact, to say you know, any country is a direct puppet state of the United States, uh, Philippines is not exactly that. No, it's not really that. But... You know, uh, so, but no, whatever it is, like even if you can say Japan or South Korea, uh, generally, it does seems like they are you no know, controlled by the United States. But in reality, most of the country's divisions are very uh, independent. Um, so this video is, we're going to go into this, why Philippines choose to be puppet states or, or choose to be, uh, to, to host UN, uh, US forces. Uh, in their country is 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 a bit special because in in southeast asia uh there is actually no countries other than philippines that is actually hosting u.s forces on a permanent basis even for singapore where a lot of people say you know uh, where i'm from say that you know singapore is like a there's u.s military bases in singapore there's uh, you, you know there's is a u.s puppet state is actually very 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 wrong because uh, in Singapore law, we don't allow foreign powers to put troops in our in our country. So the way they, where they do come is usually in transit. If they need, they have their special uh, permissions, and uh, in most of all these places that they go is really Singapore bases. No, they they are just here. You no, know, and come and go. They do not base in Singapore. Generally speaking, in fact, they are not supposed to. So. Uh, but of course, you know, you, you can say that, no, I'm just nice cook, you know, but it's reality is reality. But in, in the Philippines, it's very different. Philippines, the they are U.S. military bases. It's very similar to what they have in the in South Korea and in Japan, where it is a permanent military base. So that's what is uh, the main thing. So uh, lately, we have this uh, breaking news. You can see this whole chain of uh, fishing ship uh, or whatever ship you call this. I have never seen a fishing fleet. Uh, so you no know, uniform. You no, know, they are all the same designs, the same model, same, um, almost same colors and everything. You know, to to call this a fishing ship is like calling you know, uh, uh, no, I'm go gonna make some very bad joke. You no, know, gonna offend people. So I'm not gonna do that. So anyway, uh, this is, so this is what happening. Uh, so the Philippines on the fourth of December, uh, you no, know, cried out you know, that there's 135 Chinese vessels swarming off its coast. Uh, and then these ships are a growing presence. They're, they're, it's getting more and more and more. It's not it's not like suddenly they appear, but it's like they has always been around uh, as the Chinese uses uh, civilian vessels or so-called civil militia vessels to, to stake claims, to act as if that they are always there fishing, then you know, it's their land or it's their sea. And... Uh, that that is is a perfectly normal thing for for you no know, Chinese citizen to be fishing or you know, uh, using the waters over there, but you no know, these ships is you no know, arguable you no know, ar like you know since when fishing ships you no know, hang out like this you no know, like as if they are having a picnic, so so the the Philippine Coast Guard of course went on to chase them away you no know, of course they are ignored because you no know, the Chinese. Of course, we'll ignore them. And this, on top of that, um, also comes on another headline news where the Philippines has opened a new monitoring base on the remote island. Uh, this is a bit of a misnomer per se. So basically, they they basically just build up some additional facilities on the existing island where they already have an airfield. So you can see that... Um, the the national national security advisor and the other officials flew to T two island, and then uh there's a newly constructed two story center with radar ship tracking and other equipments. So this is the thing they have, they built a two story center 
with radar and uh, communication and uh, tracking sensors or whatnot. It's not a base per se. It's just a building. And um, so where is T2 Island? So this this mapping, uh, this is our headline mapping, uh, the, the DPA's headline mapping. And uh, there is all the islands that is already mapped out uh, in the South China Sea who uh, the the light pink one this is uh, Vietnam the dark red is China the yellow is Philippines purple is Malaysia so all have state claim they plant flag they built a uh, fortification fort some of them look like medieval forts I'm no joke I'm not jo even joking like they look literally like a me medieval fo fort but not uh, this video is not about that and a uh, T2 island is actually this island here and you can see that this is not a new base the Philippines have already built a significant uh, outpost over here with a full of uh, a full air base uh, around here a uh, full ru runway uh, of course uh, it looks like a village over here you can see uh, the kind of uh, building materials that they use so uh, this is a military island and uh, they simply just inaugurated one more building uh, with sensors and radar but of course i just want to highlight that this is nothing compared to what the chinese have built uh, if you look at what the chinese built uh is a lot more prettier and beautiful and uh, much more tidy and of course this is already an old photo uh the new ver the the updated one would look even more impressive so and then there's a lot of them so there's a lot of them so um also sorry that's the that's the, that's the vietnamese one this is the chinese one sorry i show you the wrong one that's the vietnamese one this is the chinese one looks almost like an american style base so uh, just now that one was the Vietnamese. Sorry, sorry. So the Vietnamese also have it nicer than the Philippines. So uh, so this is the reality. Uh, and why is this the case? You know, why why is there all these uh, problems between the two? Uh, it's because of this. The South China Sea is a disputed area here uh, where the Chinese basically drew a so-called nine dash line. I heard, I remember they say that the, they kind of have uh, updated it to a new number i think it's 11 or something so um so the this red line here this is the the chinese uh nine dash line and basically they just claim literally the whole south china sea and they draw the border super close to other countries like there's totally no respect for other countries uh uh sovereign uh waters except for vietnam so uh so except for vietnam somewhat because there was some kind of agreement with the Vietnamese government so you know they give some sort of respect around here but you can see if you come to the Philippines they can't they, they don't really give a damn Malaysia Brunei no they don't give a damn in fact they stretch all the way to this is the Natunas Island this belongs to Indonesia and uh, they drew really close to it and uh, they even tried using all those uh, militia ships and uh, a few of them actually got uh, intercepted by the Indonesian Navy a few years ago and they got sunk like they arrested the people on board and then they sunk the ship. So uh, since then, the Chinese Navy did not really dare to come near to the Natunas Island. So, and uh, you can see that um, in terms of uh, even uh, Brunei, Brunei, there was this 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 whole stretch. This is all based on the EEZ. The, the EEZ is what? Economic Exclusive Zone. Exclusive Economic Zone, sorry. So, um, and then the Malaysia one is a green one. And so there is some certain overlapping claims because these are not recognized islands per se. So everybody uh, suddenly started to you know just quickly send troops and uh, try to plant their flag and uh, build outposts as fast as they can. The Vietnamese is the uh, is a somewhat of a Vietnamese and the Philippines and the Chinese actually claims a lot. So the Vietnamese claims that all most of these islands are all Vietnamese, and uh, you can see that their, their lines are ridiculous as well. Philippines as well as well, they feel that you know some of these uh, Shobro shores and uh, this area in the east uh, western part uh, is all theirs, and then they stretch all the way. Of most of the Spratly Islands, they all claim the same thing. So, uh, but there's no real fighting between the Southeast Asian countries around all these islands uh, because nobody wants to start a war. And uh, just to add, this 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 Chinese line is also claimed by Taiwan, which is also China. They are Republic of China. So China, the China we know today is People's Republic of China. They're both Chinas. That's why there was a there's all this one China policy thing. So 
Taiwan basically claims the same thing, and I want to sh and I can show you that the Chi the 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 Taiwanese also have a military base. There's one just off Hong Kong. This is the Pratas Island. Those this this is a military base. Uh, uh, with uh air base. You see, this is Dongsha Island, Dongsha Airport, and uh, this is Taiwanese. There's another one. Uh, over right in the middle. This is also a uh, this is called the Taiping Island. This is also administered administered by the Taiwanese. So, so you can see how complicated the situation over here, and you can see the, the there is almost no kind of a uh, 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 structure to it. You can see that the the Chinese have one here, one here, one here, one here. Philippines is here. Then suddenly there's a there's a Vietnamese one over here. It's a mixed bag. You see, even in these few islands, you can see that there's a Chinese and a Vietnamese all mixing up all together. So you know, it's it's uh, only the Malaysians still, still, you know, seems a bit more, you know, organized. They are all in the same area here, uh, and uh, the uh, even the Malaysians they have an airbase around this area here. And which one was it? Uh, uh, this is the one at Cheryl Reef. You can see the Malaysians also have an airbase. So this South China Sea is, uh, is a very contested thing. Generally, the stand the stance of Southeast Asian countries is status quo. We do not change anything, but that's when the Chinese uh, become a threat because the Chinese don't feel uh, they stick their claims and they, they are willing to defend it somewhat and uh, they're willing to take actions which is where the you know, militia fleets comes in and so and as such the, 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 the Philippines can't really deal with it so why the Philippines can't deal with it because Filipino military is almost like a joke they are, they are so weak and and they're, they're so weak to the point where there is totally no ways for them to for them to actually deal with um the chinese be it the, in the navy or in the air force so uh so the so in recent years because they has been they has been bullied by the chinese so much uh they have embarked on a certain mon uh, modernization and uh, military purchase and uh, militarization of you know of their army and navy and air force so that they can actually better deal with the chinese but it's still there's no way they can beat the chinese just want to add and uh, as such they actually bought a few stuff like they have this uh jose rizal uh class uh this is a frigate so this is the frigate that they that they bought uh they, they really have two i think there's more coming soon so so currently, one one of them, the first one was sent on the refit, while they have the second one still, you know, operating, and the uh, and the Philippines also bought HIMARS and Brahmos. So HIMARS, of course, you already know if you are following the Ukraine war, uh, but the HIMARS is not very impressive, uh, in their test trial. I heard that they missed all their targets <laughs> in their test firing, so it was it's not really a, a sufficiently good weapon. To, against a surface ship uh they, they i think they tried to shoot something in the sea and then they kind of missed but brahmos is very interesting brahmos cruise missiles philippines is the first uh buyer of this cruise missile the cruise missile can go up to three uh three times the speed of sound and it's actually uh, one of the most powerful anti-ship missile out there that can that you can buy and the, the indians are really happy about this you know they finally be able, able to sell this the brahmos missile is actually you know co-developed co with the russians and um and uh the deal was signed on 20 20 22nd uh as for the this ship as you can see the uh, the refit is currently happening this 2023 and uh, when they first bought this this was in 2020 these are all recent, you know, within these three years. Okay, I just want to show you how intense the militarization is. So they, they decided to buy the HIMARS. I don't think it was delivered just yet. They, they're going to buy Brahmos on the 375 million deal. Um, and then the Brahmos become official uh, on the January of 2022nd. They, they, said, they confirmed that they're going to buy. They, they have some signing ceremony. And then they also bought uh, the, the Turkish attack helicopter this really really cool looking helicopter that looks like a cobra uh like the cobra helicopter of the americans the t129 and uh, this was bought uh in 2020 uh 2020 2022 on march 
so the first of the helicopters have arrived six months uh, later, but then it still arrived in 2022. That's just one year ago. So this is the helicopter. You can see it looks like a hornet. Uh, like uh, you know the the insect hornet, not the plane. So it's it's very very cool helicopter that they bought, but they didn't buy much. I think they buy six, and um and they also buy the Kai T fifty, so the or the F A fifty. So this is the lightweight uh fighter jet, and uh, the the Philippines do not have a uh, air force almost. The air force is pathetic, and uh is very 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 weak. I think. And uh, they after that they decided to buy twelve of these F F A fifty fighters. However, uh, despite they have twelve, uh, they have twelve, only five was is operational by the time of uh, last year, September twenty twenty two. Only five is operational. So, just want to highlight how weak the military is, and then um, so they decided to buy more. Uh, my understanding is that they are exploring to extend the contract to buy another twelve. Uh, so the fighter it looks uh, actually like a t mini version of the F-16. The the there is previously I have I think I believe I reported before. Uh, the Philippines also tried to explore buying F-16s, but it's very expensive for them. I don't think they can afford it. T-50 is cheaper, and uh, it can uh, fulfill some of the roles that the Filipino needs. But of course, I think if they meet some of the Chinese carrier-based fighter jets, I think these are doomed. Um, so then uh, Philippines also in 2020 bought the Super Tucano. This is a close air support aircraft. I think it's from uh, Brazil. So this attack, helicopter, uh, attack aircraft looks like no World War II aircraft, but these are actually very good ground, ground support aircraft. And this is actually super important for the Philippines uh, because if you... Later, if you continue to be watching this video, you will probably find out that they have a lot of uh, insurgency issues and uh, this kind of aircraft is perfect for them to provide air support. Again, 2020. So it's all happening within the three, these last three years, this militarization. And this just shows the level of threat uh, Chinese is posing on the Philippines. Um, they, and, and when you look at this, you, you it's, far, it's a bit hard to you know to visualize that oh these are puppets of the Americans and they must buy all Americans they have no money to even buy American stuff even the HIMARS deal uh, is a kind of like a not here not there because so many people is buying HIMARS I don't think the Philippines will be in the first uh, receivers of the, all these HIMARS I think Poland will get it first and uh, this is so and uh, these more photos of the super uh, super Tucanos and. And then they also bought artillery system uh, from Israel, the Atmos 2000. Uh, and uh, this hot weasel uh, is a truck base and you can see this uh, and the artillery is at the, at the rear of the truck. Uh, this is delivered 31st December 2021. So again, within this last three years. So this is a level of, mi of militarization uh, that the Philippines is currently undergoing. This, this spells the level of threat that Philippines is undergoing undergone and all this buying is pro most probably uh, under the previous president uh uh president uh Duterte. so uh the the one that famously said that he's going to pivot to russia and china away from the united states but actually you know that was some just in my opinion some just some kind of a geopolitical exploration and uh he went on to make all these purchases probably during his reign so that you know Philippines have some some sort of a military to actually you know call a military, so so if you look at the the level of a uh, mili the military the army they have pathetic level of military. Uh, I think if they fight the if they now fight Hamas they might not necessarily even win Hamas to be honest. So um, they have a uh, no tanks per se. It's Sabra no light tank. They have ten. Uh, you you can you can already see how bad it is. I have these. They have like fifty armored carriers, 200, 300, 400, two hundred, three hundred, and then the rest is all wheeled versions, around another three hundred, and then the rest is just you know at uh, uh, Humvees and whatnot. They they do have a lot of trucks. They have like thousands of trucks, uh, because they are very infantry based army. So you no, know, they have a lot of trucks to drive all this infantry around, and that's about it. That's the army for Philippines, and then, and then you look at the air force, T fifty. They have twelve. 
as we know, only five is operational. The other, the others are known in needs of repair. Bronco is a like a post World War Two attack aircraft. Uh, this is like a joke of in in today's age. This is going to get shot down uh, almost instantly in a war. And then of course we have the uh, the Super Tucanos. They have only six. So no, all this is just insufficient, severely insufficient. And uh, they also bought uh. So they have a the T T one two nine. They only have six six attack helicopters. What can you do with six? Not much. So, and then if you look at the navy, the this uh, Jose Rizal uh, class fr frigate, as you can see, they have only two of them. And then the corvettes, the Yap class corvette, the Corrado Yap class, they only have two as well. And then everything is just petrol vessels and gunboats, and no, this is just not something that you can fight with fight the Chinese navy with. So come to this point, why do I go through so deeply ab about the Philippines military strength? Because if you have this kind of level of military strength, you are literally pointless. You 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 are you are not. You can't really present yourself uh, any form of deterrence against any foreign powers, especially. So in Southeast Asia, we are all very friendly. We we don't. We don't know. We don't want to go to war. We don't use military power to take over each other's land or to stake a claim. So, the threat is not in Southeast Asia. However, Chinese has proven themselves to be willing to use their military power, especially they did against Vietnam, and uh, to to capture the Parasail Islands. And then they have repeatedly uses their navy, their their coast guard. Their coast guard basically is like a navy. The the ships, their coast guard boat is like bigger than any ships that the Singapore Navy have, other than the landing ship tank. And basically, you know, constantly bully Philippines into submission. And the Philippines can only use the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, to try to stick their claim, but they can't. They just they they, they just can't deal with the pressure that Chinese put on. So why? The Americans are in the picture because they need the Americans to be around because they can't defend themselves in the air in the area where a super or a potential superpower like China is a major power like China, basically Chinese military. All of Southeast Asia's military combined still cannot defeat the Chinese military. That is the level of disparity. So, why the Americans are needed in Philippines? Or the Philippines will think that there's a need for China to, uh, for U.S. forces to be around to be based here. It's not as simple as you no, know, just oh they want to be a puppet or they are a puppet. That if you look at Philippine politics, America don't really figure much. To be honest, America don't really figure much in, in Philippine politics. The it only comes to geopolitics and come to military that they need the Americans to be around. And with the Americans around having certain some of these military bases around here, US military presence, it keeps everything in order. No no one dares to you know, to try to be funny with Philippines except for rebel forces. And this is why, you know, there is still this problem. Uh, the, the, the Americans can't really do much about terrorists and uh, rebel groups in, within Philippines but you can see this is just recent December 8 there was a terrorist attack at a Catholic mass uh, in Marawi so so this this happened and then um, the military strike back the Philippine military strike back at this uh, Dao, uh, Daula Islamia members uh, after this Marawi bombing and uh, they, this this is the kind of a uh, main uh, problem that Philippines focus on for many many years that's why the military is very infantry centric there's not a lot of uh, armored vehicles that you you can actually fight another army with uh even though know, the aircraft that they had it was just a ground ground support aircraft the focus is mainly towards counter insurgency and and with such an army there's no way they can deal with china and this is why they need the americans to be around and Unfortunately, this is uh this is the reality that the Philippines face, and with with this uh increasing geopolitical threat because China has never been such it's been so threatening until you know the past 20, 30 years as particularly over the past ten ten years under Xi Jinping it becomes really bad so uh 
so the the Philippines actually you know allows they sign new defense agreement with uh United States and basically you can call them alliances. So you no, know, is they are basically an ally, and I think any in any war in any situation, Philippines is attacked, United States will be there, just like in World War Two, United States will protect Philippines, and um, so more military bases. They this is the, these are uh these are Filipino air bases and a uh, ground ground army bases. I think yeah, they are all air bases with just one uh HQ infantry uh training facility these are all offered to the americans to use so uh so this is all across the islands you can see it's very this this provides a certain level of strategic depth for the americans and um so they have us uh us uh access to military bases this is another article this is by the cbn abs cbn or uh, philippine media so yeah so they signed certain deals i think these are the same ones that was uh, mentioned just now in the map and as you can see uh based on this enhanced defense cooperative uh, agreement now the americans have a lot more bases there's a lot focusing on the top uh you can say that you no know, it's more relating to because of taiwan and china but also you have to understand this is where also Malina, uh where manila is uh this main island over here and of course palawan uh this is uh this this is the westernmost uh island of course then you have a uh, some 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 others i think these are all more, more like a strategic depth purposes so that you know if anything any rubbish shitty thing happen over the north they can actually still retreat to the south so this is the entire situation with philippines and um so if, if you are a country with such a weak military and uh generally the economy is also not very strong as such you with, without a strong economy you cannot have a strong military and then you are already actively getting a bullet by a major power which is china what what would what would you what would your options be you don't have much options a capitulate you can't really capitulate uh just like this because there's no war it's not even like you know like the ukraine russia issue where the russians invaded so when the russians invaded then i think the uh without any foreign helps i think the natural thing is just to surrender but uh, currently philippines is not at that juncture the main reason why it's not at that, or at that juncture is because uh asean as a whole condemns uh chinese uh assertion that the south china sea is belongs to china so and uh, with global international uh support for philippines and also the lack of recognition of Chinese uh, claims of the nine dash line, the that is it's very hard for China to militarily just conquer you no know, South China Sea just like this. Uh, it will just you no, know, it's just as bad as just attacking Taiwan. It will just get them isolated entirely, and then get trade cut off, and then they will set them back by decades in terms of economy uh, and uh development so china is not ready for war in that way unless they know that they can they're going to get uh at least sufficient international support so that they will not collapse as long as they can go to war and econ economy don't collapse like what happened to russia then china will dare to do more and so so while the while no none of these southeast asian countries is able to defeat china in a in a war uh we can of course drag it on for a long time because there's it's all jungle there's there's nothing that the chinese can do to conquer uh, southeast asia but what you need to do geopolitically is that you want to create as as much as possible a balance of power so why philippines go into militarization despite you no know, they are not going to win the war because it just deters china even more so it makes make it even more troublesome and troublesome and hard for china to make a decision to attack philippines or conquer the islands that is claimed by philippines similarly to have u.s bases uh, built up around the palawan region as you can see from palawan you can easily reach all of these uh spratly islands uh, this creates additional deterrence to china to decide to go to war so this is actually a reversal it's not a lot of the anti-united states or anti-west uh 
people thinks that no, it is the Americans provoking the Chinese. The reality is that it's actually the opposite. The it is the, the the Chinese that have been claiming so aggressively to the point where everyone just have to go the way of United States. They have to bring United States more into the region because that is the only real counterbalance to China. If if Russia have a bigger influence in this region, the the region will have gone closer with Russia as well. Like what Vietnam Vietnam has do. Vietnam has very very close relationship with Russia, and 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 no, China don't really like that. China really don't really like Vietnam having such a close relationship with Russia, and but the reality is Russia do not have much projection in terms of influence and power, which is also why in the previous video I mentioned that mentioned that Singapore, uh, in the folly of a moment things that is okay to sanction Russia because Russia is just so far away with so little influence in this region. So so who is there who is there left uh in the region in the world where Southeast Asia can depend on? There is no one else. There is no more United Kingdom. United Kingdom is a, a shadow. I think it's worse than a shadow. It's like you know it's like a it's like nothing of what it was during the British Empire. The French are weak. The, the Italian are weak. You know, every Germany is weak. Everybody is weak. Australia is also not as strong. Australia also needs more help. The only power that Southeast Asia can depend on as a counter against China is United States. The bringing United States into the region is not means that there is war, but bringing the United States into the region prevents war because. As long as you have a very close balance of power, both sides do not dare to act. The same reason why, you know, United States don't dare to you know, go to war with China, because there is no guarantee of victory. You you can't necessarily win easily. You're gonna take a lot of losses. Similarly, with the American forces in the in Philippines, no one dares to uh, go into a war situation with Philippines because you don't. Even if you can beat Philippines, the Americans are there and it's going to whack you very badly. So the Chinese know that. So the Chinese do whatever they can. They try to militarize the island. And particularly if you look at the Paracel Islands, uh, it's ridiculous, the kind of militarization. Uh, you can see there's a there's a, a military base over there. And then there's further military bases over here. There's all these uh, watchtowers. I think there's more. Uh, this They claim the island. There is this another no don't know why is this this like look like Kowloon to me. What else? Uh, you can see this a uh, major naval major base with a major port. And uh, yeah, you no know, the, um, the the this is what the Chinese do. They also build more. There is a there's an air base just around here. You can see very very beautiful island that they reclaimed and uh built up the military base, super modern. This is what the the the, the Chinese do. The Chinese have to do this because they felt very insecure with American presence in the region because uh, the Amer the Americans uh, guarantees Taiwan uh, they are in Philippines they are in South Korea they are in Japan and uh, Singapore is very close with United States so is Thailand and then and then in if I will go into this into you know in further videos how Indonesia is also now getting closer and closer with the uh, with the Americans so is Malaysia and all this is all in reaction because of Chinese uh, aggressive actions in South China Sea. If the Chinese did not get so aggressive in South China Sea, honestly, most of the countries in Southeast Asia now uh, would actually lean towards the Chinese rather than the Americans because we all know the Americans you know is not the most trustworthy partner but everyone don't even trust China even more because China have a real stake in this region here and they are they are indeed have been proven to have conducted espionage and you know conducted military pressures diplomatic pressures they have even do done limited sanctions that was a uh, uh, rarely reported uh, on on these countries no so no these are the reality of the geopolitics in the region. So why Philippines want to be a puppet is not that they are a puppet. They need the military bases to be here because they can't fight it alone. So thank you for watching. Hope uh let me know what you think in the comments on and of course you know let me know if 
this type of content this the way this way of presentation uh if you like it or not i know it's a long video uh but you no know, is there's a lot to talk about and there's a lot more geopolitics all around the world to talk about and if you like this kind of content let me know then i will actually go more more uh do more of such videos we can talk a lot about all the different countries especially in asia since this defense politics asia we, we can talk about the geopolitics about japan in south korea north korea indonesia bangladesh into india and whatnot so thank you for watching and uh press the like button and uh, subscribe and i'll see you in the next update